Welcome in, everybody, to another podcast. Judy, how are you today? Doing well. How about you? I'm good. So I recently went to the audiologist. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. And today we're going to talk all about why you should take care of these little things, right? Absolutely. All right. We'll be right back. See you soon. Welcome to the Cogni Thrive Podcast, where we help you understand the signs of early cognitive decline and the many ways available to keep your brain healthy. Judy Pritchard is a certified cognitive coach with more than 30 years of experience, and her company, Cognithrive, provides comprehensive tools to support cognitive resilience as you age. Join Judy and her husband, Philip, as they continue to spread the message that dementia is not definite. All right, so recently... You finally talked me into going to the audiologist. (laughs) Yay. It's only been three years that I've been bugging you. (laughs) I know. I know. And I did find out I do have hearing loss. I'm hearing most of what everybody's saying. Yep. But I do notice when I go to restaurants, crowds, that kind of thing, you know, I just at some point kind of tune out because I can't hear it. I'm tired of trying. So um, tell people why the hearing aspect is so important in detecting early cognitive decline and how it might lead to more. Yeah. So um, first of all, thank you for going. I so appreciate you going. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So with your hearing, if your world is all of a sudden shut off to sounds or you're not able to hear conversations, you're missing all that opportunity to make new memories and to stay engaged and to learn new things. So really you're limiting yourself as far as getting your brain exercise, just a normal day socialization, which is one of the key areas that you really need to continue focusing on to help your brain stay healthy. That makes sense. And so tell so what did the audiologist end up telling you? So the audiologist told me, like I said, I do have hearing loss, which we knew that. I mean, that was a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've played drums. I love loud music. I have a Jeep right with the top off. I want to say I told you so. I know, but. I know. But, um, <laughs> you know, she did tell me I'm hearing most of everything. But when crowd, I'm getting in crowds, um, just things that blend in, I, I can't kind of discern them. So I know when we are at restaurants or crowded places, I a lot of times we'll just kind of tune out because I just, it, I can't hear it and I get tired of, you know, going, what, what? So um, I am going to get a hearing aid, but I've taken the first step because, you know, hearing aids are expensive. They are expensive. And I want to make sure it's something that I'm super comfortable with before investing a lot of money. So uh, AirPods mm-hmm. now have, you know, a hearing aid function with mm-hmm. your iPhone. So I ordered one. It should be here today. And I'm actually excited about checking it out. I'm so thankful that you did. So let me go back to a second. I hope you all ha- caught what, he, what Phil said. So one of the things he said was that um, I get tired at the end of the day, especially of even trying to hear things in noise. So he's tired because his brain's having to work extra hard to even hear the basics of conversation. And that is a sign that you're, you're causing your brain more stress. So by helping your hearing, you're mitigating further decline in your brain because you're not adding all that extra stress and right. you're getting the stimulation. So it's twofold. Not only are you eliminating extra stress in your brain, which we know stress management is huge mm-hmm. and helping it, stress management is key to helping your brain be healthy. Yeah. The more stress you have, the less your brain's able to function fluidly and rapidly. And so by eliminating that, by getting amplification so you can stay engaged in the conversation, it's a twofold win. Mm-hmm. You're hearing, you're staying socialized, you're building more relationships, learning new things, and you're exercising your brain yeah. rather than shutting down right. and removing yourself from right. the situation. So I'm really help, I'm really happy that you bought this, um, that you went ahead and made the purchase. I'm actually excited about it. Like I've told you, I've never really had a pro- – it's not a, vain, a vanity no. thing. I don't care. I just, so much of what I do for live video production involves me wearing headphones or earpieces and communication devices. I just don't know how it's going to interact with that. But the AirPods kind of are the best of both worlds at the moment. So I am excited to try it out and can't wait to go to the first restaurant and like be on the end of the table and go, yeah, that's great. (laughs) And we've had a lot of family things lately, uh, celebrations, and we try to celebrate a lot, any little opportunity because life is too short. You got to celebrate. Yes. And, um, 
we I always try and strategically put Phil in the middle of our group. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I notice he's out there, and all of a sudden, his phone will come out, and he'll start checking his phone when there's not a need to check your phone when we're on the social setting. But it's because he can't hear and understand, and I get it. Yeah. Um, and he mentioned AirPods, so we haven't tried these yet. But thanks to a friend of mine from high school, thank you, Jerry, if you're watching and listening, <laughs> um, he made a post about it. And this is a guy who goes to a lot of concerts. He's very active and um, has a really cool lifestyle. And um, so I shared it with Phil. And I said, let's just try this. Mm -hmm. It's a much more financially reasonable product yeah, you can it's buy. It's a good step. And it's cool. You wear AirPods all the time anyway. Do, so yeah. why not get the latest and greatest ones that mm -hmm. you can tap into Bluetooth and yeah. actually hear the world around you? Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. So you, we were talking before the podcast, and um, you were talking about a study that you've come across that's talking about kind of the two phases or the phases of Alzheimer's. And, and one is the silent phase, which kind of ties into my hearing issue, because there are lots of things that may subtly we see happen that we don't know, you know, this could lead to something more. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So on October 14th of 2024, so just brand new hot off the press, um, the Nature Neuroscience Journal released a study where they um, again reiterated this point that researchers have been talking about over the last several years in that we know the brain starts changing many, many, many years, even decades before someone is diagnosed with dementia. So those are many, many years, even decades that you can mitigate your chance of getting dementia. You could do things. So we talk about all the things that can lead to dementia, blood pressure, hearing impairment, visual impairment, diabetes, and or concussions or head injuries. And so I think sometimes people hear that and they think, oh, I have blood pressure issues. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have diabetes. I am diabetic. Oh, well, I have um, a hearing impairment, but yet I don't know. I can't afford a hearing aid. Mm -hmm. um, when you hear those things, all those things that we can control, the point is not that you're diagnosed with it. The point is do something about it. So when you're diagnosed with it, if you don't do anything about it and you allow it to run wild, it's going to make you uh, more likely to get dementia down the road. Mm. If you address it and you're managing it, it decreases that risk. So you've got to get active and taking care of that earlier because of what this article is saying um, and Dr. Richard Hodes, who's the director of the National Institute on Aging, actually is quoted throughout this article and this um, as, as stating, it's now, it's another research study that's showing us that we need to focus on those years of the silent phase, is kind of what they're calling it. Mm. The silent phase being that it's not impacting our daily lives, but our brain is changing, and we need to know that that brain's changing. We need to know when we're having subtle changes that we so often um, are too quick to write it off. Right. And instead, again, it doesn't mean by addressing it, it doesn't mean you're diagnosed with a neurocognitive disorder. Right. It just means I know I have to live a more healthy lifestyle for my brain, and mm -hmm. here's how I do it by, one, managing your cognitive health. You have to know how well is your brain functioning today. Mm -hmm. That's where we come in. Yeah. That's one of our strongest missions is we want you to be empowered. Right. And they do that by? Taking our cognitive exam. Yep. It's time yeah. for you to do, redo yours, I'm, by the way. I'm ready. Hey, I'm not scared. <laughs> take it on the front. Take it to get your baselines and then at least annually retake it. Yeah. So in those subtle, silent phase years, mm -hmm. we can see if there's any changes. And then... We get busy. We figure out, are there medical reasons or health reasons that we can fix? Mm -hmm. Are there stress-related issues? How are you sleeping? Um, Have you changed medications? Yeah, yeah, that's a biggie. Have you engaged your pharmacist? Right, right. And, you know, you're talking about uh, not being diagnosed with with cognitive decline. So we're not, we don't worry so much about getting diagnosed with high blood pressure yeah. or diabetes or depression we're like, okay, fine. I just need to know I will take meds or I'll change my lifestyle. So your brain health is really no different. It's not. The The problem is people want a get, get better fix quickly. They want a pill. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to pop a pill and say, okay, my brain's great. Right. We don't have that yet for the yeah. brain. Yeah. We don't have that at all. In fact, all of the, even the newest medications are designed for after someone's diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Um, and there, you know, some are great, some are, the, the studies are showing mixed results. 
So you have to know what you're doing. But the key is, don't even get to that point. Right. Let's take care of everything as early as we can and keep you active, keep you li- keep your lifestyle busy. Because what happens is, especially with hearing, and we saw it a little bit with you, not anywhere drastic, so mm-hmm. don't anyone panic. <laughs> I'm happening. fine. And sometimes <laughs> I just like to tune out. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I did notice where he was starting to um, – be on the outskirts, if you will, of social interactions. And it was because he was miss you were missing a lot mm-hmm. of the conversation. And you didn't like to ask people to repeat things. Right. Um, and the natural tendency for society, I guess, is if you misunderstand something and then you ask for a clarification, it's a joke. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. yeah, did you hear that? He thought it said especially this. In, I didn't say that. Especially I said in this. some of the circles I run in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rough crowd. Out there. Yeah, it's a rough crowd. So eventually, you just sit down and shut up and go. Then mm-hmm. that's not what I want you to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I want you to be my active partner for the rest of our yeah. years. And so um, that that withdrawal is one of the things that, when someone is diagnosed, seems to really get exacerbated. And what I hear from families a lot is, he's just not interested in anything. He's mm-hmm. just not interested in the things he used to do. He doesn't want to do his favorite activities. He used to love to coach Little League, and now he doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's some of those early signs and indicators that if you see a sudden change in your loved one, have those early conversations of of support, not that, oh, I think you have dementia, Mm -hmm. but let's go see what's going on. Let's make sure we have go through this entire long checklist, and we have that, and we can help you with that checklist. Mm -hmm. And let's mark off all these things that are in our control to get help for. And then if there are still other issues, let's attack the cognitive side. Let's make sure, not even if and when, but let's let's all along the way make sure we're exercising our brain. Right. Um, it's easy to get into routines of withdrawal. And your brain, like we talk about a lot, is a muscle. Mm-hmm. So what happens with a muscle if you don't use it? It goes away. Yeah. Or it at least gets way smaller. It gets way (laughs) smaller. Your brain essentially does the same thing. If you don't continue exercising it or causing yourself to use it by doing new things, Mm -hmm. new active, active things, it's going to learn to be a pattern of not being active. Right. And it's going to slow down. And you're going to have those age related declines that that the stigmas tell us are going to happen as you age, but they don't have to. Um, And stigmas, you know, are just a lack of education. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have changes in your brain as you get older, just because you're getting older. Right, right. Yeah. That's very good information. Well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So from, um, so I know we're talking about hearing. Is there the same kind of thing that could be from your vision going out? That kind of thing? Yeah. um, A lot of vision issues. In in fact, vision is getting a lot more recognition nowadays um, as far as being another one of those areas that we need to take care of because same kind of thing with hearing. If you are limiting your vision and limiting what you're able to see, you're limiting your brain's opportunity to continue being active in those visual areas. Right. And it's going to lead to even more slowdown of your brain. So get your eyes checked. Make sure your eyes are staying healthy. Make sure you have your lenses and that you wear them. Same thing with hearing aids. Mm -hmm. Make sure you wear whatever aided amplification system you choose. Guess where I'm going in the morning? I got a night doctor. I didn't even know that. Good. That's good timing. <laughs> see, that? see that? Yeah. Yeah, but see, I got to make my appointment too. Yeah. You, so let me tell you okay, something. No, about, no, no. We yeah, don't have to yeah. go there. No. Yeah. So, <laughs> so she needs to practice what she preaches on a few of these things. So she's getting better, but I'm yeah. doing my part now. So I'm now I can't get to hound her about I it. I do have to go to the eye doctor. But yeah, the vision thing, I know a lot of people our age or when they get into their 60s start having trouble driving at night. Um, cataracts, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So it's very important because it's really easy to just go, eh, I just won't drive at night. But that's one yes. more way you you limit your social interaction or things that you may not do. So check with your eye doctor. There's so many things that can be fixed and just get over your fear, take some good meds and go get what you got to get done yeah. to do everything you can to stay active and just keep pushing yourself. Well, yeah. In fact, it's interesting you mentioned cataracts because I have a good friend at book club. Um, hello, Marie, um, <laughs> that she just had cataract surgery and she was, um, 
she was just amazed at, she knew she was having problems. She mm-hmm. knew, obviously, I mean, if, for anyone that's experienced cataracts, the fog that comes over your eye mm-hmm. is just really detrimental. But she, um, after the surgery, she's just been re-energized in, in what she can see. Yeah. And her brain is waking it back up again yeah. to all the things you can see. Um, and beware, though, a lot of times the, 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 the approaches of fixing a cataract aren't really aggressive. So mm-hmm. if you're struggling with your vision, make sure you're pushing back and, and stating, no, I really, I don't want to wait till it gets to be really problematic. Right. I want to be able to see because it's important for my brain health. Yeah, yeah. And the more we're all talking about it as a society and expecting that change in healthcare, the more we'll help bring healthcare along to, to knowing proactive health approaches are key to our right. survival yep. and key to our longevity. Okay, so the other part of the study that they talked about um, where they were talking about phases of what's when the brain changes. So the first one, like we mentioned, is the silent phase. So that's this phase that we talk about a lot from other research studies that shows the brain's changing many years before. It's just very subtle, so you really don't recognize it unless you're really in tune. The second phase, according to this study, is the actual disease development. So the first phase is long. It can take years. The second phase, once that plaque has tipped you over that point of the summit, basically, of the mountain, where it's tipped you over into where you are having those functional impacts of change, your brain can start to really rapidly decline. Hmm. Um, And that rapid decline can be over years, but when you're looking at the decades that your brain is slowly changing, it's almost like it gets in the hyperdrive once you get pushed over. Um, kind of like a snowball the, effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, again, what you want to do is not get to that point. Right. Um, and by managing and being empowered to know how your brain is functioning early, starting when you're in your 30s and 40s, then you can know if you're starting to see subtle changes that are getting you closer to that summit. And that's where we really need you to get active in taking care of whatever you can. All these areas we just got done talking about that you can manage your hearing, your blood pressure, etc. So that's the point. So it's, again, another study emphasizing the importance of being empowered to know how your brain is changing, um, if it's changing, and how to keep it active. The problem with the brain changes is that the more your brain starts to change, the less, one of the first areas that changes is in your willingness and ability to initiate mm-hmm. a task. So that just think sense. about that. Yeah. So if you're, one of the early changes is your ability to initiate something is going to go away. Mm-hmm. It's going to be harder when you're forced to, to be faced with a right. real cognitive decline to right. make yourself do it. Yeah. So the more we do that now, the more we're training our brain not to go down those paths. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. As always, Judy, great information. Thanks, honey. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll let you know how my eye doctor goes. I can't wait to try out my AirPods today. Me hopefully. too. So, we'll, we'll keep you all in t- informed on how that works. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. <laughs> thanks for listening. Please follow us on all your favorite or any favorite podcast platform. Check out our YouTube videos. Um, Judy does speaking engagements. Go on our website and make sure to look at information about our cognitive assessment. Yeah. And if you're having changes, let us know. Um, and so that we can talk about that and call me, call me and let me know. Um, I'd love to talk to folks and help them see and, um, give them action items on what they can do to help themselves. So call us. All right. See you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And remember, we are not physicians and you should always consult your doctor about what treatment is best for you. Please visit www.cogni-thrive.com dot com to learn more about our services or to book Judy to speak at your next event. Yeah.